And so that led to our uh, multiple studies actually, both in MDS, frontline relapsed, and in AML, frontline relapsed, combinations of hypomethylating agent azacitidine with PD-1 inhibitors, also with CTLA-4 inhibitors, and now we're actually doing combination of azacitidine with double uh, immune checkpoints, PD-1 and CTLA-4. And what we saw in uh, one of the larger studies that is completed and is now being reviewed for publication, which is a combination of azacitidine with the PD-1 inhibitor nivolumab, was that when we treated salvage patients, the study predominantly uh, enrolled relapse patients, now it's enrolling frontline patients, but in the relapse population we had 70 patients and the overall response rate was about 35%, which is double of the response rate you would see with azacitidine or decidabine alone, and there's a lot of data published uh, recently that actually shows response rates of 15 to 18% when they're used alone. What was really more impressive was that even though the response rate was slightly increased, there was actually a significant improvement in overall survival. And especially people with early salvage, which are usually the people who have a preserved T-cell infiltration and whose T-cells usually are still quite active, were able to have a significant survival of 11 months, which is double of the survival that would be expected with azacitidine decidabine in the same population. So we then went back and we did a very meticulous collection of biomarkers from bone marrow aspirates and all these patients, both before starting the trial treatment and then almost every one to two months on trial. And we actually saw that you could predict based on the pre-therapy CD3, CD8 in the bone marrow who would respond, who would not respond. And now going forward, we think really to get the maximum bang for your buck with these immunotherapies, which has already been done now in solid tumors, you need to do biomarker-driven studies. So you need to not treat all patients and hope to get a very high response. But if you select patients who already have a high CD3, high CD8 in the bone marrow, meaning their bone marrow is already showing a favorable immune activity, then you can use those patients, push them further with immune checkpoints. And in our study, we showed that you could have a sensitivity of up to 70% for response if you used a uh, appropriate CD3 cutoff. And that's uh, the next step is to do a selective study in that approach. And I think that may be the way these drugs are used in acute leukemia, just like for FLT3 and IDH, you select them for FLT3 and IDH mutation, that's where you get the best activity. Similarly, for immune checkpoints, you probably need to select them based on pre-therapy CD3, CD8. And then if they don't have that uh, favorable marker, then they should probably go to other treatment options.